It is always difficult when dealing with fossils and even with many living organisms to distinguish where a species ends. In modern organisms, one of the main characteristics is uh, any population which can interbreed under natural conditions is considered to be the same species. Obviously, the individuals which produce two different fossils cannot be observed to see whether they could interbreed, and very often these fossils come from different parts of the world and at different time periods. And so therefore, whether they should be classified in the same species or not can be an open question which is difficult to resolve by the experts who study them. Homo habilis offers such a case where some individuals feel that diverse fossils should be classified as Homo habilis, which it was a variable species, while others feel that these fossils should be split into two or three separate species. Some fossils, which might be classified as Homo habilis, have been tentatively classified as a separate species, Homo gotengensis. Some fossils known from Kenya have been classified by some authors as Homo rudolfensis, a separate species from Homo habilis. Uh, one famous skull, the KNMER1470 skull, had a cranial capacity of 750 cc's, which was significantly larger than other Homo habilis finds. So some consider this to be a separate species from Homo habilis, while others group them together with Homo habilis.